Everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessie Champs, checking team number 2046. Bear medalist team, phenomenal season. Uh, you might have seen their incredible climber as it goes through three blue banners in competition play, plus a chairman's award too. So looking absolutely phenomenal. At Chessie Champs, definitely looking for high expectations here out of this team as well too. By the way, help me speak more about this robot. I have uh, Alex, Julia, and Peyton. And uh, for this row right here, really the complete package uh, from Swerve all the way up through. We'll cover that cargo journey. Talk about their awesome climber deployed as well. Let's talk about more about this team coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. First updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics scene and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu slash apply. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. So let's start out with your uh, intake here, Julia. Talk to me about what's gone into it, any iterations you might have gone through, and uh, what's it all comprised of? So we started out with an intake that had more of a kind of like a turbine system. It had flaps on it. Sure. At the start of the season for our Wilsonville event, that's what we had. So it had flaps and then Velcro on the end and it would intake the ball that way. But then after our first competition, we found that we pushed more balls away from the robot. So then we decided to move to a more rubber type of material on the wheel. Over our off season, we found that we liked this grippy tape more than we liked that rubber material. So what we did was we switched out that material for a smaller tube size and then this grippy tape. And then we have mechanism wheels. So this way we don't have to have wheels on the outside to feed the ball in. The mechanism wheels will do that themselves. So you can collect it from anywhere and then it will funnel into the middle. And then we have these two balls that will go straight into the superstructure. So it'll feed straight from the collector into the superstructure and then it'll intake all the way up to the shooter where we have wheels, but Alex will talk about that. And yeah, so it goes down and then it'll spin to collect the ball. And then if we, and then it'll intake the ball a certain distance. And then when it goes to collect a second one, it'll do the same thing and then the superstructure We'll move this ball up to make room for the second one when it intakes. So once the supersonic sensor senses another ball, it'll run the superstructure a certain distance to move this ball up and make room for the second. And then it would vibrate our driver's controller to let them know that they had collected a ball. So each time that they collected a ball, it would do that. And then it would max out two balls so that we could only hold two. One of the things I was a little surprised about uh, on your intake is I thought it was going to be a very compliant intake, like very wobbly, right? But you guys have a pretty rigid intake out of it. When you're looking at uh, uh, taking taking on the game challenge, was that your initial thought was to have something very rigid for durability, or how did you approach that? So we wanted durability, but then we also wanted a place where it would break, specifically if it got hit. So we have plastic or polycarb blake breakaways and you can see that the inner one is thicker than the outer one because we found that when it pushed against it the inner one would break more often than the outer one so if it does get hit it breaks out those breakaways specifically and then doesn't break anything else on the collector sometimes if we get hit hard enough it'll bend the metal plates but what we do is we have a whole second collector that we'll swap it in for sure so if it is damage that is unrepairable in like three minutes by swapping breakaways, we'll just swap the whole collector and then we'll, we'll work on it off of the robot and get it prepped to be another switch out unless the collector on the robot breaks. So we pretty much cycle collectors through the competition based on either break breakaways or just replacing the whole thing. Let's continue the journey on, hand it over to Alex, talk more about the uh, as we go into the superstructure and then your uh, shooters will tell, we'll talk about some of the programming that's gone into your uh, shooting as well. So let's continue that cargo journey. Okay, so um, just coming back to the superstructure, super uh, we have some 3D printed custom rollers here that will self-align these uh, poly belts. Uh, and we had to custom uh, size these. It'll come up, hit the shooter. We have these roller wheels to help feed it into the actual uh, shooter wheel right here. And we have back here some wheels for backspin to help reduce backspin. Uh, and in order to see actually what we're shooting at, at the uh, hub, we use these limelights. 
And while for most of the robot, repairability is a lot of our big, um, it's what we really try to aim for. Uh, since we went for a fixed shooter and it's not going to be moving very much, it's not very moving parts here, we hopefully will never have to worry about ever having to repair this. Yeah. Um, and even though it is a fixed shooter, at one, it helped reduce a lot of our weight. This robot weighs 125 pounds, and if we tried to make this shooter uh, a not fixed angle shooter, probably wouldn't have been able to take it to competition. So we had to go with a fixed angle shooter, but even with that, we had our programmers do so much testing in our, uh, in our field house that they were able to make it so that even though it is a fixed angle shooter, we have a lot of area and coverage on the field where we can still shoot and hit to the high hub. Yeah, I mean, your team's been doing fantastic all year, I think, hitting its shots. Where does uh, Bear Metal like to shoot from? What's kind of your sweet spot? Our sweet spot's definitely the ring around the hub um, with the tape where like all the robots would start. It's definitely our sweet spot, but we can go a little bit farther out if we need to. Let's start to wrap up uh, talking about your uh, climber on here, which I think is definitely one of the highlights. So I asked your team, like, hey, what are you so proud of? Climbers, what came out first? So we got to talk more about that, Peyton. Talk about what's gone into it, and then we'll show off the climber sequence as well. So our climbers, we started design thinking about how we should climb about second day of uh, build season, right after, uh, right after we learned about the event, uh, because we realized that that's going to be a big portion of this game, of the game. And so we used drawings from, I think it was the, like, uh, 2013 uh, Cheesy Poofs design for like sure. a telescoping arm. Uh, we kind of used that idea to uh, design and generate our own uh, uh, telescoping arm with a continuous belt that routes all the way through it. So the reason why we went with continuous belt is because it's uh, it's just it's faster than using a, a spring and winch, winch system that a lot of other teams are using, uh, and it's just. There's just less things to worry about with the springs, if they get stuck and all that. And so we start off with uh, thinking of only using two arms and then using uh, uh, like hooks on the shooter. But we realized that we can squeeze in two more arms on the robot uh, to just greatly increase the uh, speed of the climb of the robot. Can we actually display it? Uh, let's show off the climber sequence. We can see how quick it truly is. These, when we initiate the climb on the mid bar, these arms lift us up. Uh, these inner arms uh, then uh, retract uh, back onto a high bar and then pull up the robot, taking these arms off mid bar. So uh, as we use the robot swinging to propel these outer arms up onto, onto traversal, uh, that's what gives us our, our three to sub three second climb. No yeah, worries. this is all automated that we just saw too, right? As it went yep, through? all automated. Very cool. Well, Bear Metal, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about your robot. Absolutely a phenomenal machine this year, and you've been building great machines for many years too. I know we've covered you in the past, so wish you best of luck here at uh, Chessie Champs, and can't wait to see what you come up in future years too. Thanks a lot for taking the time. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics scene and FIRST Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu apply.